of the Sula, as discussed by the Gemara. The Masha asked, as we said in the beginning of the year, why did Ravina and Ravashi give us an entire blot of Gemara that deals with no halacha, no agadita, just medicine? The Masha says the point is to show that the Titan encompasses everything, including all the Sulas. The Sefer Dibetayah from the Minchas Allah discusses this. He points out to Gemara in the Sechtas Yuma that says that someone is bitten by a kel of shaita, a rabid dog, Machilam Eifei Mechatzah Kavi Chalai. He should eat the very part of that dog that bit him. Hagam, that's only one sheet in the Gemara in the Sechtas Yuma, but an idea of being cured by the very, very factor that caused the disease to start with apparently seems something strange. But then again, says the Minchas Allah, that is something that Louis Pasteur discovered, and the world gives him credit for, the idea of eating from the very disease so the body develops the resistance to it. And here we have a Gemara that touches on this topic many, many years before Pasteur, Lahavdu. The idea of kinim, of lice, the name Yayim, the idea that there are bacteria, infections in a human being, concepts that the Gemara discusses well before medical science had any idea of them. Historically speaking, he points out a Yishalmi in the fact of Shabbos, Faiz Hashem Yimuchor Kol Choyli, Zerayin, a Choyli, a sickness of the Machshav of thinking. The Yom Ebelaz of Anasim Oil Basel Tzavarecha, Zerayin. And the Yishalmi points out various psychological pressures that a human mind can endure, depression and so on. The fundamentals of psychology of the human psychic well before the field of psychology was born. However, getting back to the Rasulahs and the many different Rasulahs in our Gemara, should one be tempted to bismanazeh if Chas Shalom afflicted with one of these diseases? To attempt any one of these Rasulahs. The Maharil says adamantly, no. This is a quote. Color of Rasulahs of Al-Khashim, all the remedies in the Al-Khashim should be called down with the three finds in the Gemara, Asr Lanase Saisa. It is prohibited to test them out. The reason he says is quite simple. Now we have to remember that it's really extremely difficult for us to perfectly and accurately identify the Samamanim and the various ingredients in these refuas. Being that it is so difficult, the chances of either getting not all of the ingredients, the wrong ingredients, or not doing things right are quite shriach, very possible. And if the refuah doesn't work, says the Mariel, one will come to the Maligal Devech Echonim. As we mentioned at the beginning of the year, it is the opinion of many, and the Mogan of Rum discusses this Simon Kuf, Ayn Gimel, he's caught in Aleph, that nowadays, Nishtanu Hativi, and nature has changed from the days of the Gemara. Others like the Shavuot Yaakov and the Yadathraim argue on this. As we mentioned previously, the Rambam is also of the opinion that Nishtanu Hatibiyam, and being that nature changed, it is possible many of the Sakonis and the Chashashis mentioned in the Gemara does not apply to us. But Vandi says the Minachat Allah are according to all opinions. Ein Chodesh Tachas Hashemish, and whatever is in the world is in Taira. He calls the Zayra Kodesh in his paper, Divrei Taira, Madur Al of Chelek Samach Baiz, the Zayra Kodesh in Pashas Truma says as follows. Marin is the Bnei Nasha. Kigan Yeroikin, the Kister in the Asphos, so there are some type of rays of refua, of healing. And the Zayra goes on to discuss these rays, how it goes through a person. Until this ray goes, and the Zayat compares this to rays of lightning or some type of beams. The Minchat Lada says his father, the Dark Yeshua, told him apparently the Zayat over here discusses what doctors revealed in many, many years later the entire concept of x rays, laser beams, and so on. Rays that travel through a person can heal them, affect the metabolism of a person, and tell doctors what's going on inside of a human being. And so on and so on. In Kol Chodesh Tachas Hashemish writes the Minchas Allah when the entire world was sure that on the other side of the world there is just water until Columbus discovered America, we had a Zayra Kodesh in Parashas Vayikr that writes, Yesham Diyarim Gam Bechel Kaitevel, the Elon Eloin, the Elon Taitain, and both sides of the equator, above and below, there is civilization. 
then again, there are those things which seem to be very strange in retrospect to today's knowledge of medical science. For instance, and we refer again to the article of Dr. Shmuel Spiegel, who is a radiologist with the University Hospital in London, his article in the Jewish Observer, the Kislev issue, he writes as follows. The Gemara Nida tells us, Gimel Shitzen Yesh Biyada. The father's contribution is the bone, ligaments, nails, brain, and the white of the eye. The Gemara tells us that the mother's contribution is skin, flesh, hair, blood, and the black of the eye, the pupil. Now, although it would seem that each parent contributes all of the characteristics of the above-mentioned organs, in fact, this is not so. There is no question of the father's genetic influence on the blood group of his child. The color of the hair is genetically determined by both parents. However, major types of muscular dystrophy is a disease of muscle, for instance, myotonic dystrophy, which leads to weakness of all muscles noted in early childhood. This disease, myotonic dystrophy, is inherited only from the mother. So there is at least one characteristic of the muscle that only comes from the mother. So we understand now and only now a little bit of what the Gemara means that it's the mother that contributes the limbs and the muscles. And it goes on to explain many other diseases of the various abram, various parts of the body that the Gemara mentions that retains and can be inherited only from the parent that the Gemara Nisechtus Nida says contributes that part of the body. Most of this genetic research only came to light after 1975, so up until that point one would have said for sure that the Gemara cannot be accepted under any circumstances at face value. Another interesting item that we have in the Siyat of the Shemaya of coming across is in regard to what the Gemara said, one of the items that we learned in this block was about a toothache. The Gemara told us various things to do with our finger, what to put on the finger and to what parts of the finger. And this is supposed to help for a toothache. What chances does the finger have to a toothache? So there's the concept. That's what the Gemara says. But I did hear a report that researchers looking for a way for people not to feel the pain of the Novocaine found that if the hands and the fingers of the body are lying in a certain position, one does not anticipate or one does not feel the pain of the Novocaine. The needle simply doesn't cause that much suffering. They aren't sure why, but it seemingly appears that there is some connection in the nervous system, the way we sit, the way our arms, hands, or fingers are bent or set about that I have some type of a connection with our gums. The point of all this is foul. The Gemara needs no rise from silkin, and naturally we don't really understand what the Gemara means. But we have to remember one thing in closing. Today, many scientists, leading medical researchers, laugh at what was assumed to be common knowledge 30 years ago in the medical field. Can we safely assume that 30 years from now, scientists and doctors are going to laugh and today's medicine, there is, however, one thing we can be certain of. We have today the very same Taira Meshur Rabbeinu brought down from Har Sinai. It never changed, and it never will. Says the Gemara. There are three things that weaken the power of a person. Pachad, anxiety. Rashi explains, Pachad means Daiga, he's worrying al davar Wasid on something that's coming, like fear of Panas or of war. It's interesting that Rashi stresses al davar Wasid in something that's in the future. Anxiety is normal in the time of a crisis. Many times it's fear.